All right, we'll open the meeting. Uh, this is the May 5th, 2022. Um, and it's now 5.04. Um, and uh, let's do a roll call. Um, all right, I'm here, Peter Thomas. Jay Stryker. Diane Martin. Holly Lankowski. Okay. Uh, these, uh, how they, um, do we have any uh, guests on the line? I don't see any icons or anything. Doesn't look like it. Right now. Okay. And um, Chris was going to call in early, right, uh, Holly? Yeah. He, he said um, he only had some time between... Chicago time four and five, which would be five and six here. So um, I would like as soon as he jumps in to just give him the opportunity. So um, he's obviously away on business and uh, we should kind of work with his schedule. Yep. Well, we should do that. Uh, that'd be fine. Um... And I know Kelly said this time didn't work for her, okay. um, but that doesn't mean she won't be jumping in at some point. Okay. Um, the uh, first the thing I want to do is, is just see if there's any other business, new business that you want to add to the agenda uh, that's not listed here already. Nothing for me. Okay. Um, since I've got the, the historic group, most of my working group report out, I'll, I'll do under that category. So, um, all right, uh, first order of uh, business would be approval of the minutes from March 28th, uh, 2022 meeting. Um, I have a few corrections. All right. Um, first of all, um, Jennifer was absent. Right. Second of all, the F, um, FCAT former head, um, I believe his name is Chris Collins, C-O-L-L-I-N-S. And Alex has just nodded yes, so that's correct. And his first name was what? Chris, you Chris. had the right first name. Okay. And right. then I don't know if it's how we left things um, but at the end, you always talk about the next meeting, and I just didn't know if we should update it to what it truly was. That may have yeah. not been what we talked about. I can't remember. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't during this meeting that came in uh, afterwards. Okay. We left it open. Okay. So I will. I will make an. I will make an adjustment to note that the meeting was held on uh, May fifth. That's what. It, that's what it'll say at the top. Perfect. Okay. Yep. That's all I had. And with that, I make a motion um, that we approve the minutes with the corrections noted. Any second? I second. I am. All in favor? Hi, Holly Lankowski. Hi. Jay. Diane and Hi, Diane Martin. And Pete Thomas. All right. I believe we have a seven member committee right with the four of us present so we've got a quorum yes okay um i think carolyn was going to or did someone have some responsibilities under the cancellation the uh, post office carolyn and jennifer and my last recollection is we're waiting for a draft of the um, contest okay. that we are gonna have with the, the school kids. And um, she was going to present that to us ahead of um, one of the meetings so that we could get it um, approved and ready. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just trying to look back through my notes. I think 
we tabled it last time, so. Yeah, um, I'm just trying to figure out when we decided. Well, we were going to we were going to issue the the uh, announcement in April, so we've already passed that. I thought we had deferred it. Um, what I have is May second through September second for the contest. All right, so, so we, we could do it fairly close to to this meeting then. We got to get it going. Well, it's it's imperative that we have the draft to review ahead of the next meeting and get it approved when we meet on the 23rd, because otherwise we're gonna really fall behind. The 23rd is the next meeting? Um, I believe that, well, in, oh, in June the 30th would be the last Thursday in the month. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I have the 23rd. Okay. Um, and I had, hang on one second, cause I had asked Kelly um, what the next two meetings were because I had, don't know if it happens to you guys, but I had a little bit of a brain lapse. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I wouldn't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I write notes. <laughs> um, May 5th and May 23rd are our meeting dates for this month. So right. mandatory think, then. Right. Well, that's yeah. right. We were going to meet twice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I will send, um, if you guys are okay with it, I'm happy to follow up with Carolyn and Jennifer Please. saying we must have a draft. Um, and I would like it at least a week before the meeting because that way we could give any feedback ahead and try to mitigate, you know, spending a lot of time Good idea. looking at it. Holly, let's, um, I, I, I like the idea and, I, and I'm um, grateful for your, moving forward with this. Let's just leave the item open for the time being. See if Carolyn or Jennifer join us. Okay. Get a resolution. In, I, I just want to write that on my to-do and I'll cross it out if I don't need to. <laughs> Otherwise, if it's not yeah. on my list. Good, good. Let, let's just move on uh, from uh, okay. so sure. just table it for the time being um, or postpone any further action today and, and see if they turn it. Um, Sign in. Okay, great. Um, the next item is the parade entry documents. Yep. Um, I'm working on the edits um, and I am hoping to try to put together a meeting within the next um, few weeks. So hopefully that will occur before the 23rd and then I will be able to give a little more reporting. Um, I did collect names um, four or five names from the South Deerfield Women's Club of Interest. So um, with Hi. some of the other community members, uh, we're gonna try to get that moving. Very good. All right. I would propose that we also uh, postpone the kickoff the the uh, lighting thing until Carolyn gets here. She seems to be. Was she coordinating some of that? Um, I think what she. Yes, we did table it. I know she was talking to someone on the town common, um, but yep, we should table that. Oh darn! Um, arrangements to cover FCAT events. Um, Alex, do you have any, uh, from your position, where, do you have any information um, about FCAT that we might find useful? Um, how so? Well, I mean, it's, it's certainly under a different director right now. John's um, taking over. Um, I will... I will add this part of it. Um, Marie, my wife, Marie, has been uh, working with FCAT. She's gotten trained on the equipment and she was filming at town meetings. So she's getting experience right now. And part of the reason for doing it, well, two reasons. One is she had past experience because she used to run a, a public access TV station. Oh, cool. uh, but she's also had experience filming 
but it was all new equipment to her. The equipment she, that she was using, that was a while ago. Uh, but it's new equipment, but she's um, jumped in and it's one more person that can help us uh, coordinate uh, with FCAT. She's willing to take on, uh, if we can provide her um, with information uh, like for their board of upcoming events and stuff, she will make sure that that happens. Yeah, no, I think that's great. Um, I don't want to speak for Jonathan at FCAP, but um, I, I would just talk to him, um, send him an email, give him a call. I'm sure he would be willing to. Yeah, um, I mean, Maurice talked to him too, and and you know he's really he's behind it, for sure. And and they're uh, just so long as they've uh, get the schedules for our activities, uh, they will pick up the staff and assign the staff to do the coverage. Yeah, no, I, I think that'd be great. Um, um, I think that um, Carolyn was reaching out to John and she was going to hope he could join us tonight, but if not, maybe the next one. So hopefully if Carolyn does jump in, she'll have an update. But my recollection was she was going to invite him to one of our next meetings yeah, I think um, that so that we could, you know, face to face, have a good conversation with him. Uh, that's all I can contribute to that particular item. I just thought it would be good to let everybody know that we had one more person backing up the FCAT enterprise and, and getting the events filmed. She will also be at the, uh, the, the first event that uh, we're going to be doing basically is Jay's event at the library in June. I think I sent you an announcement, all of you. Yep. Um, the, only, the only change uh, that's made after I talked to the uh, librarian is that instead of at four o'clock that afternoon, we're gonna be doing it. We're gonna start at 11 o'clock in the morning. Hey, Chris. Uh, so anyway, and um, I, I think Marie will film that event. The other thing I'm gonna do, uh, well, two things. Um, I'm gonna to put together a little uh, introductory thing just to talk about industry in Deerfield. Uh, I've got a poster um, set up to deal with Mill Village with uh, paintings and everything else that talk about that village uh, at the bars. And then uh, I've just done a scan of all the maps and I've got a map of Deerfield where all the former um, mills were located. So I'm, I'm just going to present that, and uh, I've got I'm scheduling in some visits to those mill sites to see if um, whether there's anything left to film. But if there is, I will photograph those and include those in the exhibit as well. But I don't imagine that's going to take more than about ten minutes to, and then John will do his um, his stick. <laughs> his nuts and bolts. Yep. Uh, but that'll be a good um, opportunity. That was the other thing to, to bring back to the committee. That would be a good opportunity to uh, also advertise the 350th. And Chris, if you've got friends of Deerfield, somebody could, that has anything uh, in terms of uh, cap or caps or anything else that you might want to sell, we could set something up in the library there. Um, and so that's um, that's June 11, to Saturday, June 11. At 11? Yeah, and we'll start at 11 o'clock in the morning. There's other things that are going on there at the library uh, that day. That it's storytelling and other things. So there should be people going in and out uh, of the library for a four or five hour period, Chris. So it, it may be a good opportunity to make contact and, and get a little public exposure. I think the, announce, the, the announcement was really nice. Um, I, I just thought just visually everything, I thought it looked really great. So nice job on that. Thanks, Holly. Uh, the, the way that I work this stuff generally is have the equipment set up, 
as people are coming by, ask them if they know anything about taps and dyes, the industries that were here, and then pick it up from that point. I find that uh, there's now a prejudice in the US when you say the word industry, people generally tend to think of uh, shipyards, steel mills, uh, huge complexes. <laughs> And yet industry in Deerfield was mostly small scale, hands-on, uh, pretty much at the uh, crafts, hobby, trades level. Uh, as you perhaps had me mention before, uh, Henry Ford had his kids at Deerfield Academy and locals did not want, did not want Henry Ford to have any connection with Deerfield and the making of automobiles or anything. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, Ford, uh, this is this Deerfield is not America's home of Ford Motors. And there's a long story with that. And I won't trouble you with that. And I don't have the dates and details. But many times industry, the word industries, I say, does carry large scale, massive stuff. But I, I want to present also the Allen sisters doing their photography on a custom basis and on a speculative basis. They went out and got pictures of uh, fogs out in the meadow. They got pictures of uh, autumn leaves, this and that. And then they had a lot of posed pictures as well. And at one point uh, they were asked and one of them said, we are an industry. So there's the two sisters using their two person little company uh, as being under the word industry. So I guess, I guess if we had a one person industry that might be a little small, but it's not 10,000 people all marching into a big building carrying lunch pails. And uh, so there is this question, attitude, uh, the word play that goes with it. But I, I, I would like to show or demonstrate uh, some of the large format cameras, which I will also supply. Uh, and then we also have maybe the corner drugstore rapid photograph processing machine that was made in Greenfield. And for the purpose of all this uh, 350 and so forth, Greenfield is the child of Deerfield. So therefore it fits as far as I'm concerned. Well, okay. it, it was also, uh, I mean, industry got to that part of Deerfield early on too. In my terms of my map scans for mills, I can find saw mills, I can find grist mills, I can find slider mills. But when I get on the Green River and I go up there, that's labeled factory. So we've, we've taken one jump ahead out of the, you know, the, the personal mills that we're running to cut lumber or whatever, you know, moving ahead. Okay, so that's great. Um, Can, Chris, uh, if you wanna, if you you know, wanna jump in, sorry. Yeah. Uh, let, let me just fill in something here, just since you mentioned it. Uh, the word factor uh, refers to in commerce and certainly in England, uh, somebody who allows a process to be set up and operating. It's somebody who says, I'll guarantee you, I will buy the stuff that you make. That would be the factor. And so a factory is a place that a factor helps a company set up and get, get going. So the people who are running that enterprise aren't going to be saying, oh my God, I hope it works. I hope we'll get our money, et cetera. So the, the word factory is considered to be more sort of a financial and larger scale than individual workshops. And the Green River stretch of factories, factories, hey, factories like Birmingham in England and so forth, Hey, that's big time because that was almost like self-promotion and propaganda of, well, we're not just a bunch of little guys sitting at benches and whittling away on sticks. And so the word factory 
help to carry, oh, this is a big deal. It's brick. It's got windows. It's got a lunchroom, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> and uh, in the very first days, it was anything but that. However, uh, Greenfield Tap and Die did a fabulous job of actually building factories that were humane. Uh, these were high ceiling, well lit places with decent stairwells and all that. So uh, it, it was anything but a hovel or a little shed in the back of somebody else's house. And I, I, I need to sort of emphasize the way that our words work. And when we say a workshop, we really don't know quite <laughs> the scale. It, the, the word factory says big scale and workshop or hut or lean to seems to indicate uh, manual work, sitting at a bench, chewing away at something or other, uh, whether it's tanning hides, hides or uh, making wheels or whatever. So, okay, Peter, over to you again. <laughs> um, thanks for joining us, Chris. Uh, we realize you're strapped for time, so we're gonna end our agenda right now. I'll let you hop in. Um. So first of all, I rearranged my schedule, so I'll listen in totally. So if you want me to go towards the end, that's fine. Uh, I think we're just through with the two with the two tabled items. We've pretty much gone through the agenda items. We're on new business right now, so why don't you go ahead and? Uh, yeah. So in terms of an in terms of an update. Um, I can't say that there's a lot of major update to give you at this point. What we have done is um, we uh, prepared a letter of outreach to businesses and a short list of like the top key businesses that we would target with more personal meetings. But we haven't rolled that out yet in terms of, of actually knocking on those doors and starting to engage for um, fundraising and supporting events either with you know cash or in kind um, and um, and we're looking for opportunities um, and you mentioned one Peter where we did we did procure um, more um, souvenir type things sweatshirts t-shirts the like so that we could show up at events and the, the last one we did was a senior center event, I think that was over in Sunderland this past Sunday. And I don't have a report as to how that went, but it's just another avenue to get the word out, uh, publicize the anniversary, as well as try to raise some funds. But the major amount of funds will have to come from directly canvassing businesses and individuals. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. Um, I don't know if your steering committee itself has reached out directly to any of the institutions. And when I say that, I mean the Deerfield Academies of the world or not, or if um, that's all being deferred to us to make the first move on that. I, I think we've made contact. I, I've made contact with historic Deerfield with the Academy, but it's more for the historic stuff, not in terms of fundraising. I think that, at least personally, when I've made those kinds of contacts, is really to establish rapport with individuals that I can move forward with joint programs, um, you know, a historic conference, you know, that kind of thing, not for the funding part of it. Okay. Holly? Um as far as the private schools, um, you might want to flush something through the select board's office uh, because the notion that Carolyn had thrown out to us some time ago was, and again, at one point we were holding the fundraising under our umbrella and then that branched off with the development of uh, Friends of Deerfield. But Carolyn said the select board meets on a quarterly basis. Um, to look for collectively the asks that they would be looking at, whether it was use of space or equipment or a bus or two. And so to not trip over with multiple asks, it, I think it just might be a good thing to flush out through them how you're going to approach it and maybe if they might have um, some design that they would want to do that with you or 
send a letter that you could carry. I don't know how they would want to handle it. Okay, that's that's a good idea. I'm I'm very concerned about the tripping up because I know there's lots of asks going on. Right, and and I do know that they help us on um, a number of levels that people aren't even aware of, whether it's a you know a, a bus for a field trip, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, use of facilities, and so um, you know things like the gala and reaching out to them. Carolyn was the one who did that for the date and the use of facility. Um, so I, I, again, I think just Carolyn, because she's the conduit between us. Um, do you have Carolyn's contact info, Chris? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Okay. And, and the other thing, the other thing that's been, you know, I mean, obviously, um, um, you know, a, a touchy issue in the last several weeks was that Tim Hilshi, who's treasurer of our nonprofit, mm -hmm. was running for select board. Mm -hmm. So yeah. he was one of the persons that was going to work with me to specifically, you know, target leading businesses and mm -hmm. have personal outreach. Um, probably that's an appearance of impropriety at this point. And so I haven't called Tim yet and asked him how we're going to deal with this, but I suspect we'll probably try to get another board member. And, uh, and then he, he, he will probably, I don't know if he'll resign from the organization or not, but he certainly, uh, I don't think can be an officer and can be representing the organization at this point. Yeah. I, I mean, he may still be able to be part of the organization, but in a fiduciary capacity might be a question because that's why that got moved away from this committee. Yep, okay. Diane? Yes, Carolyn made it clear um, that the steering committee was sort of part of Deerfield, so we couldn't have anything to do whatsoever with anything that involved fundraising whatsoever. It was more your capacity to do the fundraising. So that's why we, we, we can't, we can offer ideas and support, but um, that Friends of Deerfield is supposed to be doing the collecting or soliciting. And, or and we did, we did secure a 501 C3 status. Right. Yep. I think, I think you're aware of that, but, um, and it, and it's retroactive. So that worked out fine in the end. Yeah. Good. Have I you started buying any swag yet? What's that? Have you started buying any uh, uh, memorial swag yet? Yeah, we have. We have, and we've okay. sold. A fair, we've sold a fair amount also. Alrighty. And well, so, very, um, very nice cap. I've got one. <laughs> oh, the caps, right? I forgot. Yeah. Um, Chris, do you want? Hmm. I guess what I was thinking about in. in I've been working pretty closely with PVMA and Historic Deerfield on historic type events. But do you think it's worth, in terms of uh, Diane swag, or in terms of advertising the 350th, to figure out what their schedule of major events is that, that's attracting people to Deerfield? PVMA is going to open this month. Is that a place that it would be worth putting um, a poster up, uh, having someone at those major events to advertise 350th? Um, it would seem, I mean, I don't know the nuts and the bolts of it, but it would seem to be opportunities for people interested in Deerfield, interested in Deerfield's history, interested in the 350th to get sort of heads up, we're having this 350th and um, you know, it, it's not, I, I've talked to, well, this is getting on my, my other reporting out, but I've talked to John Davis, who's the executive officer for, De, for Deerfield historic Deerfield, and he's on board with really trying to support us any way we can. So it, it might be feasible on some major events to just have a table, have a person uh, from Friends of Deerfield uh, 
advertising the 350th and some of the things that are going to go on in the 350th, particularly as we get closer to, um, to 2023. Yeah, and so yeah. I think that we our best approach with Historic Deerfield and PVMA, and that means um, John Davis and Tim Newman, is probably to try to team up on these events, especially during the summer, fall season, leading up to 2023 because I think it's more likely they'll support us by letting us be involved in the events and be able to show up and have a table. And we have tables, we have the tents got donated, you know, for having, you know, shade or, um, or protection from uh, rainfall. So, so we have all that stuff. So we kind of have banners, et cetera. So I think that's a good idea. Now it's the appropriate time as they're opening up to reach out to them. Yeah, they had a nice event at Deerfield. Uh, not a lot of people came, but the, their opening event was uh, um, Women in the Revolutionary War, uh, which just opened last Saturday. And um, there were a number of people that came through. I went up, um, sat in with some of the docents and stuff like that. And, and uh, But uh, Memorial Hall's opening up this month. And... Um, just a, a permanent flyer in terms of the 350th would be a good place just right behind the uh, desk going into Memorial Hall Museum uh, to, to let them know. And, and I've been working with uh, uh, PVMA um, I, in terms of the photographs uh, for the houses that Deb has or Van has right now and uh, uh, other kinds of things I, the, for the uh, poster session for Mill Village. Apparently, one of the Fuller sisters uh, or one of the Fullers painted a picture of Mill Village. So I have to go photograph it on Friday because it's never been photographed before. <laughs> uh, you know, in, include that. So, in, anyway. Um, yeah, so, you know, early on, um, when we were setting up the website for our Friends of Deerfield, uh, we reached out and got a good collaboration with Historic Deerfield, PVMA, and Deerfield Academy with photographs. Good. And so, so we use those on a kind of a rotating basis on the website. Uh, but I think these um, real live events that will certainly happen more frequently during the better weather is um, we need to show up. You know, my father always said the first thing is to show up, right? So, <laughs> uh, just so you know, in June, um, I'll tell you the date. I think it's the 24th and 25th. Um, I got to get to my calendar. Hang on a sec, just to make sure. Friday and a Saturday, the 24th and 25th is the Dublin seminar at Deerfield. And the, Dub the Dublin seminar is a two day event uh, of uh, historic. What am I trying to do here? Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, it's, a, it's a two day seminar and uh, there's it's going to draw a lot of people. And if one of the things you might ask, it's going to be both uh, live and by video. So there may be an opportunity to get a video plug that reaches out to a lot of people that can be done dur at, during that session. Um, there's going to be 12 presentations over those Tuesdays, they're focusing on tools. Uh, I don't know whether Jay's gotten word of it or not, but there's a lot of, it, it, it really, the focus is on a, a whole variety of different kinds of tools. Um, but I'm also giving a paper in terms of Native American stuff. So, but um, that might be a good opportunity and that will reach countrywide. 
Dublin seminar has been going on for over 20 years and it's, uh, they, they publish the, uh, um, publish the papers afterwards. And they're really fine research papers and, and it's very well respected. So yeah, Holly. Um, Chris, I'm not sure if your group has thought about uh, the Chamber of Commerce that's now coming into Deerfield uh, because that might be a venue where they would uh, display some items. Um, maybe even um, if you had a sample you know, shirt with information of where to order stuff, um, they might even have something there. And I, I also was thinking, um, because I know she's had her own version of Deerfield um, shirts, um, is Nancy Sadowski at the old Deerfield store. Um, that may be another place where she would be willing to, you know, if you had X number of pieces of stock to take it on and, you know, just settle up with you as she sells it. Uh, so it might be a possibility there um, um, to help out. And because um, I, I, I know she used to have, I think it was almost like a graphic done by elementary kids or something, welcome to Deerfield and she was selling those shirts. So again, um, she's usually um, quite supportive of events going on in town, um, fundraising and so forth. So. This okay. might be a, another good good thing to look at. I have one of those shirts. Uh -huh. with the wandering map of different sites all over. Yeah, yeah. Back, all over town. Yep, exactly. Okay, thank you. Do you have any other uh, items you want to bring up, Chris? No, on? I think that's it for now. Okay. Thank you for taking the time to be with us. Yes. No, no problem, but I'll, I'll listen in to anything else you have. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what's up next on mine? Is it, uh, is it, is it the horse historic working group? I think is the next one. I uh, think so. All right. Now let me report out on a number of things. Uh, this last month's been pretty uh, busy. Uh, a few months ago, I sent out a, uh, some spreadsheets in terms of Deerfield Vital Statistics. With uh, all the names? The names and, yep. and uh, the, the kids uh, and who was born in Deerfield. And, and it really got me going about uh, minority population, immigrant populations. I mean, one of the things that all the celebrations have done of, you know, we've got King Philip's War and we got 1705 and we've got that period, but we really got the 19th and 20th century we had to deal with in terms of the 350. And those spreadsheets really drove it home. Um, if you remember, they cover from 1850 to 1910. And there's over 4,000 children were born in Deerfield in that time frame, and somewhere close to half, if not slightly more, of the kids born in Deerfield were born here of foreign-born parents. Uh, initially Irish, German, and occasional English and whatever, and then with the Polish and, and Eastern European families coming in beginning in the 1890s, I mean, it's just, it's a part of our history that we've got to try and come to grips with and highlight uh, and integrate. So one of the things that I, all, I also have the vital statistics for marriages and deaths for that population. So I have three spreadsheets. I thought the kids was the fun one to, to send out, but anyway, I have the data. I've just finished collecting all of those statistics in paper format between 1910 and 2005. So we essentially have between the early records for Deerfield between when Deerfield was first settled in 1850 
are published in a book. And they're at the town office, there's some in the library. They're not that difficult to access. But if people are doing genealogies, they exist. And now we're having the, the with the spreadsheets and we have the opportunity to bring those spreadsheets right through to present day. It's all public data. I mean, there's no reservations about publishing or having it uh, available, but it would help the town clerk. So one of the things I've got, a, I got a question out to the town clerk is what format are they maintaining those vital statistics today in Deerfield? Because if they're in digital format, I may be able to just take their digitized data and integrate it into the, you know, the massive database. But otherwise we're going to, I got to figure out some way to get the paper stuff digitized. Um, Marie's working on what I wound up doing is copying all the town reports from 1895 to the 2005. I ran out of steam at 2005, but we have them right up till this year. Wow. And I think it would be a wonderful gift to the town to be able to have those composite vital statistics for the entire history of this town. Mm -hmm. That's great. So nice. we, we may be able to uh, find some grant money to, to do that. And Gene, uh, Alex, how do you pronounce your mom's name? How, the last name? Uh, it's pronounced Soika. Soika. She's working on the Polish uh, piece of that, um, those spreadsheets right now. And um, we're gonna see if we can try and, try and find integrate the pictures to the spreadsheets to to whatever uh, so that's a piece of what i'm thinking about and trying to find people to participate in if anybody's got an interest if, um we can we can always use the help and if you know of anybody who likes genealogy and whatever but also can type spreadsheets so much the better uh, <laughs> Yeah, Holly. Um, is there some way, and I'm not saying now, but down the road, that you could consider having some searchable database available at the Tilton so people could go in if they wanted to look up their family? Yep. There's multiple ways to do with it. Um, we One of the things that I've done with Hatfield is put their, I've done, I've digitized their vital records and it's on the town's webpage. Anybody can go and search it. Mm -hmm. Just go okay. into the town, go into Hatfield Town Clerk. Okay. And look at the uh, vital statistics and you'll see it there. And you can just go in and read it. Um, hey, Carolyn. Hi, I'm sorry I'm late. I made it as soon as I could. Well, that's all right. We, we've been holding business for you for your arrival. Oh, stop. I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> uh, no, we've been co we've we've covered a number of topics. Uh, I was just reporting out um, on the historic uh, working group. Uh, well, let me finish this, and then we'll go back and pick up the two items that we have tabled until uh, Carolyn or or Jen can join us. So, okay. Uh, uh, I mentioned the Dublin seminar, which is coming up in June. Um, I've just finished a paper for that uh, seminar, but it's a paper that I can uh, rework and use during the 350th in terms of public presentations as well. So try to accomplish two things at once. So it'll be given in the seminar, but I could do something similar next year during the 350th using that paper. Um, talked about Jay's event coming up and uh, that's the first 350th event. It was designed to be a pilot 
and a way to announce the 350th coming up in which Jay can you know, expand out and, and uh, also link in with um, our, museum of, our, our Museum of Our Industrial Heritage. Uh, so uh, I had a uh, chance meeting with somebody on the Northfield Historical Society uh, two days ago. Uh, Joe Gravelin is, and I in, is lives in Northfield, and I I think there's an opportunity to co-sponsor or uh, a project with Northfield. It's their 350th too, and um, but they're going to have most of their events during a one-week period. So it may be a way to get people who likes history in both towns, if we can coordinate a program to combine elements of Deerfield's history and elements of Northfield history. Um, we haven't got any further than that, but the invitation, we, we sort of, I said, well, I'll, I'll take it back to the steering committee. If they're not, mm -hmm. yes, we should pursue it. I'll, I'll get back to them and we can, talk about that further. Um, I don't mind being liaison with uh, with a group just in terms of trying to figure out whether what kind of opportunities we might have. Do you know what their dates are, Peter? Yeah, that was my question too, Peter. Do you know what week they're talking about? I think it's in June sometime, but I will I will double check that. I'll, I'll um, I, I can find out for the next meeting. I, I, I love the idea of the synergy of having, um, and of course, I'm sure there was some overlapping history there had to have been. Um, so I, I think it's great. And we certainly want to invite them to all our events, which are all through the year. Yeah. So whatever you think, um, especially if there is you know, some overlap, I mean, you know, obviously, compared to the rest of us. But if there is some overlap, I think we should try to highlight it and invite them down and do stuff with the town. The, yeah, I mean, one of the interesting things is the geography has changed over time. And at one point, Deerfield actually abutted Northfield in terms of boundaries. Uh, so Deerfield and Northfield were that frontier <laughs> end, of the, end of the line here. Uh, so that's a great. Uh, I mean, I think we should talk about that. I, I mean, that's the kind of stuff that's really interesting. And the other thing that's that's uh, happening, there's a, there's a deed, an Indian deed for, for uh, I think there's three up there, but there's one of them is signed by a fellow named Massimet and his wife and his daughter. And uh, Northfield is is generally considered Squawkeek or Sokokie country. And then we got the Pocumtuck down here. Well, turns out Massamet is a Pocumtuck. Hmm. He's not a, he's not a Sokokie. But what it clearly says in the deed is that it's not his rights that he's participating in selling. It's his daughter who inherited those rights from her mother, who was a Squawky. So we have the two Native American communities, one at Pocumtuck, one at Squawky, intermarried with one another. So we can go with the borders and we can go with intermarriage at the, at the Native end. And I'm sure there's a whole bunch of people that were born and brought up in Deerfield that married Northfieldites too. You know, we could go that road as well. So. I'm sure we can find interconnections between I, Deerfield and Northfield. Yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty exciting. And, and like you said, I don't know the intricacies of all that, but it, it, you know, having the different stories, I mean, that's just fascinating all by itself. Yeah, Holly. Um, I just popped up their webpage. Um, they're having their parade Saturday, September 30th. Oh, that's late, okay. And fireworks that night. Um, it says Northfield Drive-In, food, fun, and fireworks the same night. 
Okay, so it's the 30th, and so it'll probably be, they'll probably have something for the entire week. Yeah, and, and maybe it, have final. they have two other dates, um, just random. The kickoff ceremony, February 18th, um, that's school vacation. It says winter activities and bonfire. And then June 23rd at the Northfield Golf Pavilion, they're going to have the Pioneer Valley Symphony. Oh, oh, what a great idea. I know. I thought so, too. Um, they do have other like oral history events sprinkled here and there um, and some walks and talks and that kind of thing. But the big stuff uh, looks like that September 30th is their date. Okay. So that's good because we could promote them and, you know, hopefully get some mutual promoting. Yeah, well, I'm sure. Um, okay. Um, just to let you know, I'm doing a talk for the Waitley's 250th, uh, June 19th at 7 p.m. It's on the environmental changes in Waitley for the past 12,000 years integrated with some archeological information about Native Americans. Really? Oh, how interesting. So- <laughs> Where's that gonna be, Pete? It's gonna be um, at the Historical Society Town Hall, I think at, at Wadley. Okay. Um, but one of the things that I've been trying to do is when I work on a historic theme or a, or a topic is to find some that I can readapt to Deerfield. And this is a really easy one. So I'm, I'm sort of getting ready to gear up for uh, speaking during the 350th, but uh, you're more than welcome to come. And uh, I, I think it'll be, hopefully it'll be a good talk. And, um, but that's when it is. And I've, I've finished writing it and I got a PowerPoint, so. Um, I've just finished an article for Historic uh, Deerfield, the magazine. Historic Deerfield is going to come out with, they come out annually with a, a magazine called Historic Deerfield. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about 100 pages, and this one's going to be bigger, but it's designed to come out in December of two, 2022. So it'll be a lead into the 350th for that year. Hmm. So I've just finished an article on uh, the churches in South Deerfield. Oh, it's wonderful. <clears throat> what other articles are they going to be um, um, having? Is uh, well, I mean, do you know if there's anything else there? On, for it's the got, going to be multiple articles. They're looking to develop one on agriculture. Oh, great. History of agriculture through time, or some. I mean, this they're open. So if you know anybody who likes to write, uh, I'd get a hold of Gene Selensky uh, at the library, Memorial Library there. Uh, but they're they usually get good writers, and they, these magazines are very well done. So maybe I Tom Curran from Franklin Land Trust. I mean, he works uh, pretty well. I don't. I don't know. It. it anyway, it, it's it's in the works. So, okay. and, and their target is December of this year. So, um, I, I'm sure it'll be a, a good magazine. But they're they're. It, it's a good introduction to have that one already made. So when we enter 2023 for our 350th, that's one of the things that you could even give for gifts or whatever. Uh, give them as gifts for, for Christmas. Mm -hmm. Yep. Get, get them set up for 2023. Um, oh, I already talked about uh, FCAT. Uh, all right. And the other, the, the last thing I wanted to talk about, and I know Jen was going to talk about this if she, if she joined us tonight, but Oral history. Um, 
one of the things that Holly just mentioned on uh, when she was looking at the Northfield uh, web page uh, was oral histories uh, days and, and, and whatever. And about two weeks ago, there was an article in uh, the recorder uh, about a couple that was going to uh, have training workshops uh, with Northfield uh, to train people how to do oral histories or, or an oral recording. And um, yep. Okay, so uh, that seemed to me and, and Marie as well, um, something that we had talked about doing, I mean, all of us before, but you know, trying to get uh, people recorded, sit down, whatever. So Marie went to their training and was absolutely excited. And I have met them several times now um, the, um, uh, it's the, their names are Carrie and Michael Klein. That's K-L-I-N-E. And both, they live there. It's a married couple. They live in Sunderland. So they're right close by. They're really interested in working with Deerfield to try and do the same kind of thing. And these guys have had between the two of them, about 60 years experience doing oral histories, recordings. They've gone, they've worked for things like the Corps of Engineers uh, to write a history of the core, 25 year history of the Corps to the town of Concord uh, doing oral histories for or people that live in Concord. And I think this would be one really wonderful way to begin to integrate what I was talking before in terms of the immigrant populations that are in here, the long, but just everybody who's been making history in Deerfield. We're all part of history, whether we see ourselves as being historic figures or not. You know, we'll all leave a, a legacy of some sort. And Peter, you know what? We can use, I think we have FCAP money um, sitting in an account for this kind of thing. How much would it cost to hire them? Uh, I need to get the statistics, but I wanted to bring it to the committee first. Uh, if, you, if you think this is a good idea. Definitely. Uh, I'm seeing, I, I, I think I'm seeing it's all, everybody's nodding here. Uh, yep. I will- Diane, are you all set with it? I want to be interviewed. Oh, okay. <laughs> sure. You're, you're already on the list. Talk about farming and land. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's wonderful. Um, and and immigration. I, All right. Let me I track probably down. shouldn't tell you, but they got me for three and a half hours already. All right. Well, let me let me track and down how much it, money we can afford to do this and get it right. paid by FCAT. Okay. What what I was what I was thinking about is longer term this is I, I think we can write grants and there are fairly sizable grants out there for this kind of operation if it to expand one of the possibilities is actually have an oral history repository and i think pvma since they already have started one the memorial library there but they may be the formal one, but there's no reason why we can't integrate that in with Tilton. I've already talked to Candace at the library uh, here uh, to let her know what's happening. But I think it'd be a wonderful opportunity to hear from many, many folks in Deerfield. And their approach is really, it, it's different than my minimal experience with oral history. A lot of times people set up oral histories to get answers to specific questions. You know, um, what do you remember about the 
three fiftieth, for example. I mean, just any, you know, any kind of questions, and each organization has a, a different set of questions. But what they do is they just they basically introduce all the talks with a simple question: Tell us about your family and tell us about growing up. Tell us about yourself. And what happens is those that simple introduction then evolves into, can go in any number of different directions, but you actually wind up getting the answers to the questions that you wanted, but it's a totally different scheme of things of how you get there. And the other thing that they do is not necessarily, although I think there's some advantages to transcriptions, but one of the things they do is it, it, they set them up with the interviews with two, two people involved. One is the interviewee, which is more not the interviewee, but the listener starts the engagement. And it really falls down on the people to, to talk about what they want to talk about. But the other person is there with a, 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 a gay, uh, it's sort of like a meter. And she's, they take notes of what are the topics, what, who is discussing what at what point on the tape. So you actually come away with an inventory of what's on, what came out of that oral interview. And so you can go back and find information. And what these folks have done is, is taken multiple tracks, found those sections where people are talking about the same theme, integrate it all. I mean, there's, there's just a myriad of ways that you can, once you've got the recordings, to use it or create a play. Um, do, they, they, um, do they edit it yeah. then too? They can, okay. or we can, you know, we can, the first thing is to get, is to get the stuff down on tapes. And, and I think those, the, the modern equipment we've got now is not the old floppies or not the old tape decks, but this is all did, you know, modern digital stuff. So you can, you got one little machine that'll hold 200 gigabytes of talking and that's a lot of talking. So it's, it's not a question of capacity. It's not a question of, oh, I got to turn the tape over. Sorry, I'm, I'm, you know, you're right in the middle of the most critical part of your, uh, what, what you're, you're just so enthusiastic about talking about something. Oh, sorry, you got to stop. I got to change the tape. You know, it just, it, it's a different world. And, and uh, these guys are just, they're amazing. So I will, um, with this, uh, yeah, pursue it. I will try and put some hard dollars to this because I was going to ask you what it was, if you thought that if we needed money up front to get this thing going, whether we could tap into the 350th. Um, oh, I you know. think we can. I think we can, but we have money. Uh, you know, well, FCAT what, has money. So, uh, I mean, we get everybody that is, um, you know, has Comcast, they pay or use, you know, a slight fee. And that goes back to the town for public programming. So, I mean, this to me is definitely fits the, uh, public programming and um you know we, we haven't used that much over the years so i mean we have years and years of built up so it's you know we have a few thousand dollars so if you can get me a budget yep. i can figure out how much because we you know we buy equipment and we pay for the fcas staff and stuff like that but that's like only 80 or 80 or $90,000, somewhere around that. I can't remember. I'd have to look at the budget, but it's, we always have a little bit left over and it's built up over the years. So we, what we want to do is get them started and have enough of a contract. It's great that, you know, we could get grants later on, but we want to get started on this. So we have something for the 350th yeah. and, you know, um, and make it available for the 350th. You know, I've been, talking to Jonathan at the, you know, cause Chris Collins has passed and, you know, I've just been talking to Jonathan and he keeps saying, yes, yes, yes. He's going to do that. And, and, but the thing is they're really busy just taping, you know, our public meetings and stuff. And, you know, so I, I would feel really comfortable just getting a, getting a start on this. And, um, 
yes, FCAT can, we can hire our own guys to do stuff, some of the stuff in the, along the lines, but I really think this sounds much more professional and, um, you know, geared to what we want to see. So I feel like it would be a good uh, uh, way to expend our money. So I, I would be, you know, advocate to the select board because the select board has control over that money. So, well, one of the things that North the, they're doing for Northfield right now is they're training people in Northfield and actually they're, they're training, uh, Marie got training to do the same thing. There's two workshops, five hours of, of each workshop. So 10 hours of training, 10 to 12 hours of training. So they're, they're getting a group together to train them about how to do this. Okay. So it, it, the training is the first part of it. I think there's going to be, we're going to have to, uh, they have some equipment, I know they do, but we may need to buy some equipment to do this. Um, but I will find out the details and um, I, I think this is super. And if we've got money that we can kick off to begin this process. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to see us get started on it because the problem is this is always, always time consuming and we want to have some product for the 2023 year. Yeah. So um, if, if FCAT can end up doing it, that's fine. But um, this sounds like a really great, um, you know, start. And, and, and I would like to see more people trained in our community mm -hmm. because, you know, especially at the senior center, if, if people are comfortable talking to other people that are trained and, you know, they might have to share more of their story as well. So um, I don't know. I think it's a really great idea. Go ahead, Holly. Um, just kind of as a sidebar, my mom um, for a number of years before she passed, she belonged to a memoir writing class that was run by a woman named Anna Viadero. I think it was Dr. Viadero's uh, yeah. wife. And she would gather this group of people and give them a topic or just a prompt and they would write. And my mother wrote maybe 30 to 40 little snippets of stories. And for a holiday gift one year, I typed all of her stories and I put them together, had staples, put them, you know, bind them up together. And I gave them to all the family, the, the grandkids and the, and the, my siblings, and we all have them. And they're like two or three page stories. They're like really tiny little vignettes, but they're so special. And um, for me, now that my mom's gone, I have that to go back to. Um, they're incredible. And so for, even for family members, if someone's interviewed and they're able to have some encapsulated stories from their family, um, I, I just love this idea because I treasure the stories that my mom had. And when I typed them up, I tried not to change any wording, even though I was tempted to, because it was her voice. And as you read it out loud, you hear her voice and it was really important. So just, it, I think it's a great thing. I, I, I love that idea, Holly. I think that well, is so special. The other thing, Holly, along the same lines is that uh, I know from working with these guys, because I said, I, I've been on, they've taped me already, but I have copies of the tapes. Yeah. And so, you know, anybody that's willing to do an interview they can get a copy of their tape, you know, their transcription. And, yep. Uh, yep. You know, so it, and, and those can, you can hand down, you can send them out to other members of the family. I don't yeah. know if you can see this, but this is my mom. Oh, yeah. And this is one of her stories. And it's the day she had her tonsils out <laughs> in, in the kitchen at their house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where, where oh they gosh. came, where they came in, a nurse and a doctor, and her and her brother had their tonsils out on the kitchen table. Oh. Isn't that something? <laughs> amazing, amazing. Totally wrong. 
<laughs> well, my grandfather was a doctor, so he took my tonsils out, but <laughs> not wow. on the kitchen table. Not on the kitchen table. He, he had hospital wow. permits, so yeah. I, I had that, and, and I remember the uh, eating strawberry strawberry ice cream afterwards. Yeah, to cut, cut the pain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that was what everyone did. <laughs> So I, th I think this is a wonderful opportunity and, uh, you know, it, it, it lasts more than a lifetime. And, and if we can, you know, really get both the interviewers, the interviewers and the, and the, and the equipment and stuff, um, I think we can get enough people in Deerfield to, and that's one of the reasons that Jen was really interested in, in this as well. Uh, now with the senior center, I mean, we have Absolutely. a many audience. And there's a couple of people that have passed within the past year that I wish we'd, the hell we'd had this a year or, or more ago. Um, but we are where we are. So um, let's get it on record now. Yeah, well, that's why I feel like we should get going on this. Um, I would, I really love the idea. So if you could get me some numbers and I'll bring it up at the next select board meeting, okay? Okay, we'll do. Well, good folks. I'm a member of the uh, Franklin County Energy folks, and I'm about 10 minutes late for my six o'clock meeting. So I am literally going to zoom up to Greenfield and do part two of my afternoon. I Don't love the conversation we've had and the ideas that we've had. I have one suggestion just to mull over the Statue of Liberty. I raise my lamp beside the golden door. And I think maybe it's brash, but we could claim part of that golden door in agriculture, in industry, finance, and education. This is a great place. And I love this place. And I think maybe, you know, if you've got the horn, maybe we should just uh, toot it a little bit more and be able to live this up and really have a lot of fun. We have a lot to celebrate. Anyway, night. Thanks, Good night. Jay. Thanks, Jay. Hey, thank you. All right, uh, we need to get back. We've still got a quorum. We need to get back to two items that were on the agenda uh, tonight that we uh, just postponed talking about, uh, <laughs> waiting for see if Carolyn would come. Um, First off, post office cancellation stamp. Carolyn, can you give us an update on? Um, I Jennifer took that over because she was going to run that comp. I'll 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 find out where she is on that. Okay. Um, stamp. What uh, what we would like, Carolyn, um, because we were supposed to launch that in the schools on May second. Oh God, it's already. So here. what yeah. we're going to need um, is to have the um, actual contest document okay. at least at least a week ahead of our next meeting which is may 23rd so i would say if we could have it by may 15th yeah i'll call ask jennifer that's she was supposed to be putting that together okay um, um because if we can look at it ahead of time and get her any feedback then maybe it'll be a quick stamp on the 23rd of may and we can get it right out mm -hmm. All right, I'm making myself a note to follow up on it. Um, I don't know where I have not we have not talked about that at all. I know she had a um, the reason why she's not here tonight is because she had a board of oversight meeting at the for the senior center tonight at 430. So okay. um, got to have an exclamation mark behind that one. Yeah. Okay. I'll make sure we get that. Okay. If you want it for summer vacation, wasn't that the uh, yeah yeah that was a whole point yeah. that was a whole point. So we need to have it out after our next meeting. And so, and I and I ju I just don't want to do it at the meeting because sometimes you know she'll pop up something and we need to review it. I yeah. really would like an advanced look. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I agree on that too. That'll be basically by the 15th or 16th or yeah. 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 Well, said the 15th. Yeah. I think that's just safer. So we can get, especially if we have a typo comment or something, then she could get it cleaned up and ready. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I think it just, 
she could just send it out before the meeting as a draft and, and then we can pick it up as a, an agenda item on the meeting. Yeah. Yep. Well, we, can, we can give her feedback individually on uh, that. And then, uh, all right. And the other one, uh, Carolyn, was the uh, kickoff uh, weekend lighting. You were you had you were going to talk to the group that was working in the park, the the common, and lighting. Oh yeah, I missed their meeting. Mm. Okay, uh, let me. Uh, we what just remind me what was the date we were thinking of for the kickoff? I can't remember offhand. Martin Luther King weekend. Okay, Martin Luther King weekend. Um, ba -ba -ba -bum. looks like 14, 15, 16. 14. Um, now just to make sure that I have the exact, um, we were going to light the cake. At the I think on the Friday night. Right. So we were looking to have Saturday or Sunday. At either common. Right. And in the past, Holly, just remind me, in the past when the late women's club have done the lighting, like the deer kickoff, was that, that was Sunday, was that a Sunday night or was it a Friday night? The deer kickoff um, this past year, I think we did um, either right before or immediately after Thanksgiving so we could light the common earlier because of everything everybody had been through. Um, right. You know, so, so, so uh, but before that then, well, typ typically it. it was like the first or second weekend of, of December. Right. But do you remember whether it was a Sunday? I, it seemed like it was a Sunday afternoon, like late early um, afternoon. We did. I think we did Fridays. I think okay. we did Fridays. So if we're going to do the cake on Friday, that leaves a Saturday or Sunday. I do. Which do you think the South Deerfield one would be more favorable? I think Sunday. That's what I was thinking too. I think so, a Sunday, you know, um, late afternoon, maybe dusky yeah. time. Yeah, I'm thinking like four o'clock. Um, probably. Yeah. All right. Let's let's. Um, I would rather have a specific, you know, request. And so, if, if we decide on that specific date, then when women's club reconvenes um, in the fall, because we just wrapped up our year, we could also see if maybe because it's our 125th anniversary starting September, um, that maybe we could even do something to tag on with that. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. Again, synergy. Holly. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. okay, so let's let's pick Sunday afternoon at four o'clock. Okay, and then we'll do something Saturday up at the old Deerfield Common. Um, you know, with the, that idea, um, I'll I'll get after I get confirmation from the Commons Committee, then I will reach out to um, Deerfield Academy and see if they want to do some kind of event sponsor some kind of event with their kids in particular. And that would make it seem special for up there. They're, um, still, they're still in session in December? No, this is for this Martin is Luther January. King. Yeah, this is Martin Luther King. January. Again, yeah, they, they'd be back from um, hot break from Martin Luther King weekend. And, and I think they actually even attend school on Martin Luther King Day. Okay. They could. I, I think so. Yeah. But we could have some kind of thing up there because that's probably not as, I mean, it really, there aren't that many people that live up there anymore. So it probably wouldn't be as um, well, well attended I, as South Deerfield. Yeah. Except that if you're a townsperson and you couldn't get to the Friday night or you're busy on Sunday, you may want to attend one of them. So we may get other people who would like to be part of one of the nights. All right. Well, let me get confirmation on the Sunday for South Deerfield. And then we, you know, we have plenty of time to talk about whether we want to do what, what you envision up in old Deerfield, because it's really, you know, the common is not as well defined. It's just, you know, the truly yeah. the common is in front of the school. So, right. Right. But this, that might be a good thing for a Saturday 
you know, for hot chocolate, whatever, you know, for the kiddos too up there. Well, they have an outdoor hockey rink now or a skating rink. So maybe yep. we could do some kind of, we could convince them to let. Like a community skate or something? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Well, let's, we'll talk about it some more, but let's, let's get, let's get um, a commitment from the Commons Committee to support the lighting on Sunday. I'll call Kate Lawless and um, I'm sorry. I forgot that that I was supposed to do that. I apologize. Um, I got distracted with town meeting. What, what, was there a little bit going on the last few weeks? Yeah. <laughs> uh, still hasn't slowed down. <laughs> um, Carolyn, you were going to speak to um, John Boshin about maybe trying to come to one of our meetings. Would you like me yeah. to take that off your plate and ask him if he could join I, us on I, the 23rd? Oh, okay. You can ask him too. I had already asked him to come. Oh, okay. You so did. As far, yes. As far so, as no, he was supposed to come. Oh, okay. If you've already asked him, that's great. Yeah. Well, it's one of the, it's good if you, if you run into him, Holly or Alex, you say something to him so that he knows that he's, um, you know, I mean, he's just straight out, unfortunately. Yep. So, um, okay. but I think he's very interested. He, he has committed to do some stuff for us. Um, but like I said, I, I feel better if we can actually get started with these other people, you know, on the, on the oral history stuff, truthfully. So that will well, be good. I'll, I'll work on that and get back to you, Carolyn. Yeah, I just need a dollar amount that we can um, vote to appropriate for that purpose, okay? Yeah. Good enough. Um, I think we've pretty much run through the agenda. Any other items that anybody wants to bring up? Just a quick question. Yeah. Um, to have activities in town, uh, people were asking, like, were there, you know, in addition to the big parade, were there going to be other di different activities? Uh, how do those happen? Do people, you know, groups get together, say we're going to do this? Uh, do they get together as fundraisers? Um, um, should people be approaching us and volunteering? Can we ask them to approach us and volunteer to do different activities? Um, I think we pretty made it pretty clear that all of us support anybody doing anything they wish you know, that is community oriented, um, is inclusive. And, um, you know, I mean, it's wide open, really. Well, being wide open and sometimes people need a more specific uh, focus on what they want to do. Are there any particular, any particular people or types of people um to initiate things is there are we looking for anything or uh any particular activity we need somebody to be leading i'm not sure i and maybe that's i'm not trying to be wishy-washy but we I, we've been asking for volunteers um but should we be more specific of what we want volunteers for i'm not sure if that's well, the problem is like if you do a 5k race or a bicycle race or a bicycle tour, um, it, you know, you have to have someone that's we're fairly interested and, exactly. and, and then you have to make sure that they have a committee that would reliably put together a good event. So, um, you know, it's not a big deal, Diane, if anyone wants to do anything, you know, we're all here to support definitely I support anybody that's interested in anything, whether it's storytelling or any, any activity, certainly that involves kids, because what you're trying to do is build memories. Um, so any, any, you know, coordinating with the, the children's librarian on, you know, some reading events, um, you know, all you have to do is get a couple of mothers together and, you know, you could pick out books that would be you know, or oral reading of the boy captive of old Deerfield, you know, or uh, do a play, you know, get, get some parents together that might have some interest in um, drama and, you know, put a little play together, you know, have little kids put a play together. I mean, that, that kind of thing, you know, is a little, a lot of work, 
Uh, but if you're doing it with your kids and your friends, I mean, it could be really, really fun and right. it would be wonderful. So, I mean, there's so many ideas that you could just throw out to people. Um, the only thing that we want to know is we want to know about it. So we make sure that there's enough follow through that if it involves, you know, you know, we want to make sure there's police um, involvement, if it's, you know, closing down streets or whatever. I mean, you just, you just have to have follow through. That's all done, Diane. We're not limiting it to, you know, whatever people's interests are. They just, and so I remember when, um, is it Heidi Flanders from Conway? Is it Heidi? Yes. When she came and spoke with us. Yeah. Um, she said that people would approach their, their anniversary committee and said, hey, have you thought about this? And her notion with her committee was, as long as they, like Carolyn, were okay with it being tied to the anniversary, if someone was willing to take the lead on it, just keep in communication with this committee so that we would be aware and on our um, web pages, we could advertise events um, as we develop our ca calendar of events. But you know, we threw out a lot of ideas from doing some kind of road race to having art exhibits multiple times. Um, Peter's going to do you know a lot of a lot of talks on our history, um, some kind of cemetery walkthrough around Halloween. You know, so there's a number of things that we're hoping we can put together and have, but right now we've been only advertising a couple of major things because we've got to have boots on the ground to help. There's a couple art groups and I, I know that we could probably put them in contact with Treehouse Brewing. They could display, you know, local artists, a renditions of, you know, landscapes of Deerfield and have them up at Treehouse. I'm sure they would love them. Yeah, and I mean, doing some farm tours of, yeah. you know, our farms that are in our, our community um, would be wonderful. I mean, there's- A cow plot uh, contest. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> that was talked about. Um, uh -huh. Okay. Um, you know, having a bonfire somewhere. Um, you know, there were a number of things talked about, right. but- we would just need to have somebody willing to be part of that and help. And if anybody's listening, all your ideas are welcome. Of course, right. You know, I, was, I was just thinking about the, the FCAT part of it. Maybe one of the things that we need to do is somebody needs to go on a show one night with FCAT and just Put it out there on the TV. This kind of thing. We're looking for events to fill in the calendar for three fiftieth, and these are the kinds of things that we've thought about. But the steering committee is open for any suggestions, particularly if you're willing to take on some of the legwork to, you know, to make these happen. I mean, our our role now is to support whatever people want to do in terms of celebrating the 350th. Right, I saw Chris's ham up. Chris, it's nice to see you. Yeah, um, sorry, I've been tied up. But um, uh, yeah, one of the things that I didn't bring up earlier that the Friends of Deerfield are looking into, and I don't exactly know the status of it because I think there was a grant application filed around it too, was having some sort of like taste of Deerfield type event. Um, and I think we were looking at, I can't remember, we actually, it was a weekend in, I don't have my notes in front of me, but uh, I think it was in August of 2022, the first time to do it. And, um, and you know, having a variety of things like a festival type thing, and we, we'd have to work, obviously, and I think there's been some discussion with um, Chief Pachurik in terms of how, we, where we might have it, how we block off certain um, roads, et cetera. It might be near Berkshire Brewery um, type thing, um, Railroad Street, and et cetera. There were different ideas. People had walked around and, 
and come up with ideas of where we could, you know, support, you know, booths and tents and stuff and fun things for kids, you know, things like poetry reading, um, figuring out how to paint. There were just a variety of ideas and then different uh, local uh, venues or even regional um, food setups and even food trucks and things like that. So I, I'm sure in our next update, that'll have been fleshed out more. And it, did we raise some money through the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to support that type of activity? I love the idea. Yeah, yeah I think it's great. Um, that's a fun, I mean, we don't have really community suppers or anything anymore. So that yeah. would be so fun, I think. I don't know. I mean, it might turn into an annual thing. That's exactly the thought was mm -hmm. that it could be annualized. Yeah. Because yeah. Amherst used to do it, but that fell off. At least, or it scaled back because they used to do it on their big common. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they would have some music and, you know, a few little offshoot things. But many of the restaurants um, were there. Uh, representing Amherst and it was really great because you could just get little bites of things and go to many different venues and taste their foods yeah we didn't we had mentioned bands also music mm -hmm. venues yeah yeah I love it Burlington Vermont used to have this huge food fest kind of thing just along those lines you're talking about and it was just ideal there because they had Lake Champlain you mm -hmm. had a big park, you had all the vendors set up in that park, and, and you just, as, as Chris said, you just go and get small samples of whatever these vendors would, you know, sell in their restaurants and whatever. It was a yeah. really nice time. All right. Uh, there's no other agenda items. I think we've covered those. And... Um, I'll accept the motion to adjourn if you anybody is willing to. So moved. Okay, Holly. I'll second it, Carolyn. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye, Holly. Okay.